Hi everyone, today's topic is systems of equations, word problems. As a reminder, you do not need to write down everything we cover in this video, but be sure to jot down important information and at least one example of each type of problem that we'll cover. Also remember that you can pause the video to jot down important notes, rewind the video to view information again, and fast forward the video if you think you already got it. Just be careful and make sure you don't miss out on anything important. Let's get started. Here are the steps for setting up equations for word problems. It's pretty simple, it's just three steps. So the first, first step is to create a variable to represent each unknown value. The unknown value is what you're trying to solve for. So since you don't know what that is equal to, you have to create a variable to kind of represent it until you can solve to figure out what it is. Then you're going to create two or more equations to describe each aspect or feature in the problem. And we're going to go over what we mean by aspect or feature later on. And as a reminder, the equal sign is used whenever you see the keywords is or was. Once you figure out your two or more equations in your system, you're going to use any method that you want to solve. But of course, I wouldn't suggest graphing because most of the time you either have really big numbers or it's just a little more difficult to put it into slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, to put it into a graph. So mostly I would suggest um, substitution or elimination. Again, make sure that you have this written down in your notes before we move on to the examples. Let's take a look at this example for systems of equations word problems. This problem says that a plane has 360 total seats, which are divided into economy class and business class. It also says that for every 13 seats in economy class, there are five seats in business class. So we want to know how many seats are there in each class, how many seats are in economy, and how many are in business class. We are going to start with our first step, which is creating a variable for each of the unknowns. Well, clearly unknowns are economy and business. We don't know how many seats there are in economy and how many are in business. So let's set E as equal to the seats in economy class. Once we figure out E and B will make for business class, we'll be able to have those numbers. And I'm going to be very careful to not write my B's so that they look like 6's. I can either do that or I can create um, variables with the uppercase. And then that way I won't have any issues with that. Okay. So the next step is what we need to talk about because we are creating different equations for each aspect of the feature, aspects. So we need to talk about what aspects and features are. So basically we're looking at the problem and they're gonna talk about two different things or features. Um, and in this problem, we are talking about um, the total seats. Okay, so the first aspect we're talking about is the total seats. That's in the first sentence. They're talking about how the in total there are 360 seats. So that's the first feature or aspect that the problem mentions. It looks like the second feature or aspect is in that second sentence. And they said for every 13 seats in economy class, there are five seats in business class. So whenever I see for every, that means we're talking about a ratio. So even though both sentences tell us about the business and economy classes, the first sentence tells us about the total number of seats, and the second one is comparing their ratio. So those are the two different aspects or features that we're talking about. So let me label that. Those are my aspects or features, whichever word makes more sense to you. 
Okay, so since I have two different aspects, I'm going to have two different equations. The first equation is going to be my equation based on the total number of seats, and the second equation is going to be based on the ratio that I see in there. So for the first equation, the total number of seats, I need to create an equation to represent that. The plane has a total of 360 seats, and they're divided into economy class and business class. Don't be fooled by this word divided, okay? That doesn't mean literally the division sign. All that means is on the plane, you have a division of business versus economy because the business class people paid more, so they have all those comfy seats and they're um, less squished together and they have snacks and all that stuff, okay? So when we say division in this problem, we don't mean mathematically division. We're talking about the, the physical space being divided, okay, between the business class and the economy class. Notice how these are more squished together. Business class, economy class, all right? So that doesn't mean division there. It just means that the people are divided, all right? Now, to get to the total number of seats, this right here is actually our key word. Total tells you to add, right? So here for our equation, we're going to set up B plus E equals 360. If I counted up all the business class seats and I count up all the economy class seats and I add them together, I should get the total amount of seats in the entire plane. And obviously not the pilot and co-pilot and all that. So we're assuming that the 360 total seats is just for the customers. So B plus E equals 360. And we got that from total. Total means to add up to get that as your sum, the 360. So using the total seats, our first aspect, we have the first equation, B plus E equals 360. The total number of seats in economy plus the total number of seats in business will equal 360 total. The next sentence is a little more difficult because we're talking about ratios. So that requires you to dig back into sixth and seventh grade when we're talking about ratios and proportions. They're saying here that for every 13 seats in economy class, there are five seats in business class, which makes sense because there's more economy seats, they're all squished in, and there's less in business, okay? And if we remember, ratios tell us that, you know, that's going to happen every time. Every time we count up business and economy, there's going to be five business and 13 economy. So if I double that to 10 business, this will be doubled as well, and it'll be 26 economy. If this is 15, then this will be 39. If this is 20, then this will be 52. Okay, so it's, it's constantly adding the same amount each time. We're keeping that same ratio for every 13 seats for economy. There's always going to be five seats in business class. That's what that ratio tells us. But you're probably thinking to yourself, well, how do I make that into an equation, right? Like we're talking about ratios here. If you remember searching back into sixth and seventh grade with ratios, you should remember that there is that constant value, that C value. Um, that is relating your two um, factors together in your ratio. And in order to get that C value, what we're doing is we are dividing them to get that. Okay, so I'm taking 13 and I'm dividing by 5. I can use my calculator to figure out what that answer is. 13 divided by 5 will be 2.6. Okay, so it's 2.6. That means that the business class amount would need to multiply by 2.6 in order to get to economy. And then 10 here would also multiply by 2.6 to get to economy. 15 would multiply by 2.6 to get to economy. Or you can go the other way around, which is dividing by 2.6 to get there. Should sound a little bit familiar. Um, and then we can use our calculator to double check that in case we want to make sure that the, that works for every single um, pair of your ratios. So 5 times 2.6 equals 13. 
10 times 2.6 equals 26. 15 times 2.6 equals 39. 20 times 2.6 equals 52. So that golden number, 2.6, is what we're going to use in our equation because it is occurring for every single one of those ratios. Okay, and that's why we are using that number, 2.6. If I were to create an equation for relating the economy and business class here, I would use that 2.6. That 2.6 was being multiplied by my business, so that's how I am going to set that up, 2.6b, 2.6 times that b, equals e. I could do the reverse as well, e divided by 2.6 will equal that b, um, but I, I personally prefer the multiplication because it's easier to write and, you know, do the reverse later on. Okay, so we have our two equations there. The first aspect was the total amount of seats. The second aspect was the ratio. So both of these equations give us different information about the same situation. We're just still talking about the same plane. But the first clue that we have is based on the total number of seats. The second clue that we have is based on the ratio. So you can think about these as being aspects or you can think about them as different clues to help you solve this uh, mysterious problem. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this and use this space to now solve my equation. I have b plus e equals 360 for one of them and 2.6 times b equals e. I don't know about you but substitution screams out at me because this e is already um, isolated and I can replace that e with 2.6b easily into that first equation. So I'm going to use substitution. Instead of b plus e equals 360, I'm going to replace the e with 2.6b. So I'm going to rewrite the b. Instead of e, I'm writing 2.6b equals 360. And then I have eliminated one of my variables, e. So then I'm going to add these two together. These are, there's really a 1 in front of this b. So 1b plus 2.6b is 3.6b equals 360. I'm like almost done. The most difficult part is setting up the equations. Now we are going to divide both sides by 3.6 because that's a multiplication. And I kind of know I'm on the right track because this is going to become a whole number. If I end up with a not whole number, that's not going to make any sense because I don't have parts of a seat. I have whole seats. 360 divided by 3.6. I could either put that in my calculator or I could figure out this way. 3.6. I need to move that decimal point over for both of them. So I end up with... 36 on the outside and 3,600 because I needed to add a zero there for this one. 36 goes into 36 one time with two zeros at the end, so B equals 100. So there are 100 business class seats. And then business plus economy need to add up to 360. So 360 subtracting those 100 business class would be 260 for economy. So 260 for economy. And then that kind of makes sense because now business is going to multiply by 2.6 to equal 260. So that works with my second equation. So I have 260 here for economy. It also makes sense because normally there's more economy seats compared to business seats. Now if these numbers were switched, then that's a very interesting airplane going on. And we got the correct answer. Okay, So that's pretty much as difficult as these problems are going to get because most of the time they're not going to use ratios. But in case you do see a problem with ratios, you know how to figure that out now. Let's go on to the next problem. Oh my gosh, words. Words are scary, right? But we got this. 
Logan genetically engineered a new type of fir tree and a new type of pine tree. The combined height of one fir tree and one pine tree is 21 meters. The height of four fir trees stacked on top of each other is 24 meters taller than one pine tree. How tall are the types of trees that Logan genetically engineered? We need to know the heights of both types of trees. Go ahead and pause the video. Try it on your own first. All right, so first off is to create my unknown variables. So the fir tree, I don't know how tall that is. So F will equal to the height of the fir tree. And I don't know how tall my pine tree is. So P will equal to the height of my pine tree. All right. I got my um, variables, now I have to look at the different aspects. So in this problem, we'll be talking about two different things. The first sentence says that the combined height of one fir tree and one pine tree is 21 meters. So the first clue that we're giving us is one of each, the combined height. Okay, of one each. That's what the first clue tells us. So later on my first equation is going to have a little bit of that. My second clue that they're telling me about is the height of four fir trees stacked on top of each other is 24 meters taller than one pine tree. So the second clue is comparing four fir with one pine. Okay, so my first equation is going to have to have something to do with the combined height of one each. So let's look at that again. Combine tells us to add, because when we add, we combine things. Height of one fir tree and one pine tree. And that combined height is going to equal, is, tells us equal, to 21 meters. What are we combining? We're combining a fir tree and a pine tree. So there we go. That's our equation. The combined height of one fir tree and one pine tree is going to equal to 21 meters. F, whoops, F plus P equals 21. And we can just put F by itself because we made F the height of the fir tree. So we're basically saying the height of one fir tree plus the height of one pine tree is equal to 21. And this kind of implied that we're talking about one fir tree when we say the height, one pine tree. So that's the first sentence clue that they gave us. The next sentence, we're comparing four fir with one pine. So they said the height of four fir trees. So if one, pine, one fir tree is F, four fir trees would be 4F. The height of four fir trees, four times that height, stacked on top of each other is, equal sign, is equal to 24 meters taller than, 24 meters taller than would be that you would have to add 24 to that pine tree. So 24 plus P. That's our second equation. Oh, I keep writing the wrong thing. So that's 4F equals 24 plus Okay, those are your two equations, and you just got that from the sentences. So they're, it's basically like putting your clues together into an equation. Let's go ahead now and solve for the answer. I can use any of my three methods. Probably not going to be graphing because I got to put it into slope intercept form, and then I have got a 24 on there. That means I have. My numbers on my coordinate plane have to go up to 24, so not a good method here. Um, substitution might be good. I do need to move some stuff around to get to substitution. <clears throat> oh, real quick though, this should be an F. Um, if it were elimination, I will also have to move some stuff around because I want to make sure that my 
um, variables are stacked on top of each other so that I can eliminate them when they're on top of each other. Um, but yeah, let's, let's do elimination just to practice. So let me get a different color here. I have f plus p equals 21, and I have 4f equals 24 plus p. So I have these two, and in order to eliminate, I need to make sure that the variables are stacked on top of each other. Right now, the f's are stacked on top of each other, but the p's are not stacked on top of each other. So let me move this p over to the other side by subtracting p. So then that'll eliminate, and I get 24 equals 4f minus p. Now I have them stacked on top of each other. This is my second equation that I changed so that it has f's and p's on the same side. So let me move my first equation back over here so that they're stacked on top of each other. And look at that, I have elimination variables. Perfect. So I can just go ahead and add them. These will cancel. 4f plus 1f is 5f equals 45. Divide both sides by 5. Cancels, so f equals 9. 9 is the height of the fir trees. Okay, so 9 is over here. And we saw that f plus p equals 21. So if f plus p equals 21, and we know that f is equal to 9, that means p would equal to whatever the difference is between 21 and 9. So p equals, what is that, 12? Yes, after we subtract them. So p equals 12. And then we can double check. Four of the fir trees, four times nine, will equal to 24 plus p. 24 plus 12 now. Four times nine is 36. 24 plus 12 is also 36. So that checks out. I am pretty sure my answer is going to be correct now. 9 and 12. And it is. Okay? There's only four of those problems, and your um, creation of your equations will be the most difficult parts of this. If you want to, you can send me a screenshot of the problem and the equations that you came up with if you would like me to double check that for you before moving on to solving it. Um, but yeah, other than that, let me know if there are questions as you work on these problems and I will be seeing you in class.